what ends up happening is that anytime that you're constantly stepping in and you're not empowering your employees, they're not problem solvers, <laughs> you know? So when a yeah. problem comes up, they're always going to look for yeah. whoever that leader is because that's what is expected of them. It's not They're going to look for like a hero yeah, to, exactly. to come in and save them, basically. <laughs> yeah. So what are some of the signs that you are micromanaging? Uh, Nick, you want to start? Sure. So, I mean, the first sign if you are micromanaging is like, are you delegating more? So like a, a good example of this would be like if you're feeling like something needs to be accomplished, are you setting out to do it yourself or are you tasking those things to another individual? Because generally speaking, when people feel like they're being micromanaged, from my experience, it's when you're not empowering them to to get a task done or they don't have ownership of a project. And so that can come into play with um, leadership in terms of like stepping in and micromanaging someone. If you're seeing like a project is, it's not going in a direction that you're wanting it to go. So you'll jump in and try to take it over thinking that you're helping, but actually it's just another form of micromanaging someone, mm-hmm. you know? So, I mean, I, I mean, I, I would be interested to hear like, like, what is micromanaging to you? Yeah, definitely. I was actually thinking about this from like my perspective that a part of like the unwillingness to delegate kind of stems from a lack of trust. Mm-hmm. And so on, on my side of things as, as a freelancer or as an employee, when I work with someone who doesn't seem to trust me, then um, that can make me insecure. And then as a consequence, my work gets worse mm-hmm. because I'm trying to, I guess, work for approval um, I'm kind of set up to fail. I don't know. That's kind of like, I feel a lack of trust, mm-hmm. I guess. So that's, see, that's interesting you say that because I think from the other perspective, it's not always about trust. It's about, is this job getting done right? Is this job getting done with quality? Is this job getting done with high standards? So in many situations, it feels like that's going to get done if I come in and help not realizing what it's doing is the opposite, that actually it's causing the person that you've given the project to to step back and actually not give all of themselves to that project. Because we've seen this, and I mean, and I've experienced this firsthand, that whenever I've done that, the person becomes more of an order taker. Mm -hmm. They stop bringing all of their intellectual property to the situation or, you know, all their capital as far as their intellectual yeah. selves, you know? Yeah, actually, I have a question for you. Um, I was thinking about, um, we did a video uh, a couple of years ago about how if you're kind of like a leader who steps in and is constantly trying to pick up the pieces or put out fires, what what does that do to your your employees and your culture that hurts the business leader. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that because you had a good, I really like what you have to say about this. Well, what ends up happening is that anytime that you're constantly stepping in and you're not empowering your employees, they're not problem solvers, (laughs) you know? So when a problem comes up, they're always going to look for whoever that leader is because that's what is expected of them. It's not going to look for like a hero yeah, to to come in and save them. Basically. (laughs) You know, Graham, you you said something uh, earlier that brings up a great point, working for approval. So you want your employees' goals to be do the best work possible and have a focus on results. Whatever this project is, you want to get the best results possible for your business. Mm -hmm. But if you're constantly coming in and critiquing all the little details, Mm -hmm. then their focus is going to be what do I have to do to get the boss to approve this project? Yeah, how, ma- how can yeah. I do this with as few revisions as possible? It's, you know, and that just becomes demoralizing and you're not getting their best work. And it can feel like a codependent relationship where you're constantly monitoring your performance on what the boss is doing or, saving, or saying. And so it then cripples you because you're wait- if something goes wrong, then let's say your boss is out for a week on vacation. Then you're going to put off solving the problem until the boss comes back and Many times the employees are equipped to solve the problem quickly and more efficiently, right? Yeah, and you actually bring up a good point there because 
if you're feeling as a, a manager or a boss, whatever your title is in, in terms of leading a team, you feel like you can never leave, right? Exactly, yeah. Because it's like you just said it, like, okay, if I'm going to go on vacation, then you see it. Oh, they're going to have their email open. They're going to have their phone. They're going to be texting. And then actually... In those situations, it creates even more distrust because it's like, what? It's like the people um, that are below them or that are following them, I should say, not not below them, but following them, they just, they're looking around like, what, they don't trust me? Like, they're gone. Like, I, I can get this work done. Why are they still checking in on me? And, you know, it's out of the heart of helping. And I, mm-hmm. and I keep going to that because it's just giving the benefit of the doubt here. Now, there are some that's, that it's not about helping, it's about ego. But there are some out there that they feel like they're helping, but everyone back at home is like, gosh, will you just go on vacation already? Leave me alone, jeez. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, and that's why I wanted to start by kind of defining this, because I don't think people set out to be micromanagers, but it just happens. Like, uh, Graham, what's another trait that where someone can tell if they're a micromanager? Like something that, you, that they would um, focus on uh, when they should be focusing on something else. Yeah, and these are some like general traits of a micromanager. One of them might be focusing on the urgent over the important. So many times micromanagers are gonna want speed of communication, respond to my text, respond to my email. Um, another one might be reactivity over proactivity. So that would be reacting in the situation to things as they come up instead of creating positive feedback loops along the way, um, and structure. So those are a couple traits that I think of. Are there any that um, I might be missing? Well, just to elaborate on one, you said um, like urgent over important. So you're saying like if they demand constant communication, like they send you an email and they expect a response within minutes. Like now, of course, you want yeah. people to respond promptly, but you also you have to give them some space to um, to just realize, oh, they might be in the middle of focusing on a really important project, and yeah. maybe my email mm-hmm. can wait a little bit so that they can stay in that flow and get the project done right. Yeah, I agree. I think that this is symptomatic of of, a, of an even deeper issue than just being focusing on urgency over importance, but also like. I think in situations where managers are focusing on the urgent, they probably haven't successfully defined the key uh, metrics that they're trying to follow to become efficient and, and successful, really. like, um, So if you have like a, a copywriter and the quality of their work is what's really important, you don't want that copywriter to be responding to email, you want them to be writing articles. And so what might be happening in that situation is maybe the manager doesn't know what's really crucial mm-hmm. to moving the needle and there's a lack of, uh, I guess, alignment and focus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, Nick, y- y- earlier you said um, that it's not always, you wanna give the, them a be- benefit of the doubt. It's not always a matter of mm-hmm. they don't trust their employees, but from the employee's perspective, it could feel like a lack of trust. Like, uh, in your experience, what happens when someone doesn't feel like they're trusted by their supervisors? Mm-hmm. They hold back. I mean, it's, I mean, you guys said it earlier, it's it's really, you're creating people pleasers. And while there is a place for that, however, if you're wanting real professionals on your team, you're wanting the top talent in your organization, you can't create that type of culture. Because what ends up happening is anytime they have an idea, they're just going to hold it in. They're going to just like hoard it. And it's like, and it's, it's creating this environment of like, well, I feel like I can't share this because my boss, he doesn't trust me. He doesn't trust that I know what I'm doing. He doesn't trust that I've spent countless hours and years on my craft. And so, because he's constantly coming in and trying to give his last word. And it's like you guys said, I'm trying to get the approval of my boss. I mean, it's, it's so layered as an employee because it's like one, you you know that, you don't want to necessarily step out of line because it could cost me my job 
or I could be seen as someone who's disruptive when really I just want to be seen as someone who's valuable to the organization, someone who's actually being used to the fullest of my capabilities. Because I, because I, in my experience, that seems to be a common feeling like I want to contribute to this organization. But however, if you create that type of environment, you can just forget about it. I mean, e- even from a standpoint of you're actually even cutting off communication with other employees and them sharing their ideas because it's like what ends up happening is they're going to get with each other. And if they want to share their ideas, first thing they're going to say is, well, I mean, Nicky's probably going to just shut all this down. I mean, we're going to have to run this by him. You know, he wants to, to give his input and automatically that just stops conversation. And in my experience, brainstorming and really happens when a group of people get together and they start sharing ideas and it just feeds off of each other. And that just stops immediately in the minute that you create that type of culture. Mm -hmm. Like when you're brainstorming, you want people to feel like, you know, a lot of people start off brainstorming with like, there are no bad ideas. (laughs) And you want people to feel like, you want people to feel that because you might say that and they might be like, well, it's just a cliche because he's going to shoot my ideas down (laughs) just like he always does. You know, it's interesting you say that because it's little things that you say that actually creates that environment. So it's little things like, I have a better idea. Mm. <laughs> not, yeah, yeah. not that I have an idea to build upon your idea. Yeah. It's, it's, it's things like that yeah. that you have to be mindful of your words. Because the minute that you someone hears that, it's like I'm, they just go back into a shell like, oh, I guess I'm not that smart. I guess he has all the brilliant ideas. Yeah. So why should I contribute if you're always going to come up with yeah. better ideas? I, I hate it in brainstorming sessions where before you've even gone to the point you can start br- brainstorming, people are already saying that idea won't work. <laughs> Yeah. They're they're evaluating ideas already, and in a really good brainstorming session, you're not going to start evaluating the ideas until you have a lot of them on the table. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in fact, if anything, you should probably be saying, "Ah, oh, it's great. How about this? Let me add on to it. Let me build. Let's grow." Right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. So part of it might be that people don't feel safe to make mistakes. <laughs> they have to have that, or otherwise they're going to lose confidence. Yeah. And when you have we have employees that aren't confident that you're not going to get great work and that's going to hurt your business overall. Yeah.